Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and as of this week's build, we got a lot of raid and dungeon testing done over the weekend, and it's gonna be one of my favorite types of builds where we actually get to test our characters for real in some group content, try all the different class changes, try different trinkets and items, and test out all of the different hero spec adjustments as of this week. And I got to spend a lot of time between things such as hunters to test out all the different changes, evokers which we covered recently, but also the class of warrior. I was really hoping that my main class of rogue would get some significant adjustments, but this week wasn't ours. So I guess I'm just gonna have to settle with another melee class that I've been enjoying a lot, which is the warrior. And as the last few weeks of builds, I've actually gotten some adjustments with significant rotational improvements for the spec of arms that offer some new opportunities, some of the changes for fury warrior buff management mechanics, but also improvements for slayer as well as the colossus hero specs in particular. And today I wanted to do a bit of an overview since we haven't taken a look at warrior in a while and go over everything that has changed with them so far ever since the launch of the War Within beta. Right before that, if you guys want to see more regular class updates like these on the War Within beta, be sure to follow the channel, otherwise let's dive right in. So as we check back with the warrior, I first want to start with some of the general class changes that they've seen over the last few weeks of the beta, as I've actually saw a few nice additions. Starting out, we have some actual gameplay components, such as adjustments to talents. And by the way, playing around with this talent tree, I like it a lot better. I'll mention a couple of things that I like about it, but also some things that I would hope to fix. But first, let's go over some of the improvements, starting off with things such as Second Wind. Second Wind has such a very specific usage for the class of Warrior. In certain situations, like most PvE content, such as raids and dungeons, if there's any type of AoE outgoing group by damage, Second Wind doesn't get too much value. But the idea behind being able to restore your health over a few seconds is a good one. So they added a little bit extra value for second wind specifically because there are even some hero specs that will synergize better with second wind. While you are below 35% health, second wind now restores a portion, 1% of your health every one second. The amount restored however is increased the closer you are to death. This is a Mr. Pandaria version of second wind that honestly at the time back in the day made warriors unkillable walking world bosses within pvp content once you got a warrior low unless you had cooldowns there was no way you're going to be able to get him below 35 percent health because second win was out of this world this version is a lot more tame one percent is a lot better than what is it five percent every second that it was back then if that six or three or four it was some wild number but yeah this version at least allows you to start benefit while you're low health the number that it says the increase the closer to death the most that you can really get as an increase is two percent so anywhere between one percent to two percent every second of health gain is at least better than nothing and with some of the other more defensive talent options and even with certain hero specs that allow you for a little bit better of that healing overall second wind can actually now maintain some sort of of value. Another talent that saw a little bit of addition is Honed Reflexes, which has been adjusted to now be a pretty big cooldown reduction talent. Cooldowns are in Rage Regeneration, but also things such as Die by the Sword and Shield Wall, so main defenses for all three specs of Warrior, as well as things such as Pummel, Intervene, Spell Reflection, and Stormbolt are all reduced by 5%. Though it's not going to be a huge reduction, but any kind of cooldown reduction or any kind of CD reduction is generally a good, especially in longer fights, and those 5 extra seconds of the ability coming back a little bit quicker could, in some cases, save certain players from a very tough situation. Another one that isn't necessarily warrior specific, or rather it's not a general warrior change, but the ability of sudden death can now stack up twice, which is huge. Normally, under most conditions, as soon as sudden death procs, the warrior wants to cash in on it as soon as possible, because there's a chance that your attacks may also generate another proc of sudden death, but if you already have sudden death active, you just refresh the current proc you have available, wasting a proc in the process. But now that the ability can stack up to two times now, if there are situations where you actually want to hold for execute a little bit later, with certain builds such as the Mountain Thin Fury Warrior, which heavily emphasizes Bloodthirst to the point where Bloodthirst is actually ahead of execute now you can still get your bloodthirst in put on cooldown get the full value of execute get the resources out of it and then continue with the rotation in a bit of more smoother play style instead of having to stop everything you're doing execute then go back to your basic rotation besides this we also had some new visuals added for the class of warrior for example the ability shockwave is a little bit wider and the actual animation kind of reflects it a little bit as you can see it's a bit of an arc another ability that's on animation change is actually thunderous roar and I've been struggling to find exactly what is different with this ability compared to live, but this is what it looks like. 
Now I will have a side by side comparison between the live realms and the beta realms of what this ability looks like and I'm recording this right now before seeing the comparisons. I didn't notice anything new except for maybe more rumbling on the ground but it's going to be interesting to look back at the footage and see exactly what the difference is but yeah that apparently did see a new visual. And from there we can move on to the arms warrior which i've been spending quite a bit of time with and i've had a i'd say generally good experience although i see the potential behind arms warrior and there's so much cool stuff with it and they added some stuff that is better but it's like oh it's just so close to being good it's so close to being perfect but take a look at warrior specifically we have a talent adjustment we have the ability of cleave which now as of the either this build or the last build replaces whirlwind which is a new change normally cleave was just an extra ability that you got which kind of functioned like a, a flip reverse side of mortal strike where mortal strike was a single target ability or mortal strike was this primary single target ability that costs 30 rage with a hefty ish cooldown the ability is also impacted by overpower so as you use the ability of overpower you increase the damage of your next mortal strike one overpower two and now your next mortal strike can do 60 percent more damage and for the longest time on the live realms mortal strike was essentially kind of replaced in some situations with cleave if you're hitting multiple enemies because cleave what it does is it costs a little bit less rage than mortal strike has slightly shorter cooldown deals damage to all enemies in front of you inflicting deep wounds kind of like mortal strike does cleave will consume your overpower effects to deal increased damage just like mortal strike but now they adjusted it so now cleave replaces the ability of whirlwind instead which i guess what it does is it does cut down on your rotational ability so no longer do you have mortal strike and whirlwind and cleave now you have mortal strike and cleave which is one of those things where warrior does have a lot of buttons i mean when you have one of my main rotational abilities on something like a mouse on the naga because a lot of these buttons are usually defensive this is like utility stuff these are very flexible and usually i never use a cooldown on my one here but now i am using slam because slam has seldom use it has some usage to it but yeah it just kind of is an ability that you would use once there's nothing else to use once mortal strike and all the other abilities are down and now you have slammed spam out but this is an interesting change because it allows cleave to benefit from all the talents that buff whirlwind so we have things such as barbaric training which buffs its damage but also critical strike damage as well as things such as seismic reverberation causing if whirlwind hits three or more targets hits them again one additional time for 30 percent of the damage things such as merciless bone grinder can now synergize with cleave where after your blade storm or demon ravager cleave deals 50 percent increased damage abilities such as collateral damage when sweep of strikes ends your next cleave or whirlwind deals 25 percent increased damage for each ability during sweep and strikes that damages the second target so the more damage you do with your um i guess any ability that cleaves onto multiple targets then your cleave is going to accumulate all that damage per stack and then be amplified further so overall there is some synergy to the cleave ability specifically that being said i still feel like it it just has too much of mortal strike dna and ever since i heard somebody talk about how the warrior discord was making a suggestion for blizz with like a couple of different things that they wish the warrior would get going forward for war within and one of the suggestions in the wish list was to make cleave replace or rather upgrade mortal strike and i think that actually it would fit that so much better like the more i think about it and every time i play warrior i've been just the entire time i'm playing cleave i'm trying to use it in aoe but i'm still finding situations where i'm pressing mortal strike and the entire time i'm thinking to myself man i really wish i just pressed cleave like i would normal mortal strike because you kind of do you still have the overpower mechanic where as you generate the overpower charges you are going to be buffing your next mortal strike or cleave so it still has that same like i said identity of mortal strike but also there's so many different pieces of your hero specs that still play off of mortal strike specifically and even with things such as slayer there's so much of this mortal strike specificity to it that has nothing to do with cleave which makes it as specific as slayer even harder to kind of justify playing cleave to some degree like it's a really good button it hits really hard it's definitely worth pressing but 
it just feels like it could have definitely easily replaced it. Next, we got some changes for Fury Warrior specifically, which I've been playing a ton with and I've been enjoying it so much. I've been playing Arms and Fury for the most part, both with a little bit of protection, but I mean, between Arms and Fury, between Colossus and the Mountain Thane, it's been an absolute blast. And someone who's a DPS main, this playstyle just kind of, I feel like fits me really well. Some of the things that have been adjusted for Fury Worry in particular, the talent of Unhinged has been added into the row where Ravager and Bladestorm now reside. Unhinged sits on the same row as Storm of Seal, by the way, they adjusted the Fury Warrior talents where Odin's Fury, as well as Dancer Blades and Titanic Rage are on the right hand side, while things such as Onslaught as well as Tenderize are on the left hand side. The ability of Bladestorm, which we talked about before, synergized really well with Slayer, as it's going to be a core component, and they added a talent to make Bladestorm a better button. In the past, especially in the expansion of Shadowlands, Bladestorm was one of those buttons where if you did start to press it, you would try to cancel it as soon as something more important came up, just as an ability it didn't really give you as much rage as it wanted. Even though the damage was okay, just during that time that you use Pamian Bladestorm, using a couple of Bloodthirsts, building up to a Rampage, and then sending a Rampage was a little bit more effective. But they're trying to make uh, the ability of Bladestorm a little bit better with its own button, and Unhinged is one of those abilities that makes it even stronger. Every other Bladestorm hit or Ravager, you automatically cast a Bloodthirst at your target or a random nearby enemy, which is massive, especially as Mountain Thane, which has such a huge focus on your Bloodthirst ability. There's a lot more of an emphasis there, but also Slayer is also going to have a bit of that Bloodthirst emphasis too. But this makes it so much more interesting. It weaves into the Fury Warrior much better, and all the procs that work for Bloodthirst now make Bladestorm kind of like a must-have ability if you do end up talenting it into it. Besides this, you also have an adjustment for Fury Warriors that happened somewhat recently. Basically, the base kit for Fury Warrior is essentially buffed. Your basic damage as well as the damage of your Rampage all have been amplified by quite a decent bit. However, this is supposed to be a trade-off for a mechanic that they don't really want Fury Warriors leaning into as heavily, at least going forward for this next expansion. That mechanic is the ability of Recklessness, or primarily being able to have as long of an uptime of Recklessness as possible, which is sadly a mechanic that I know a lot of Fury Warriors that play the spec enjoy, trying to extend that recklessness and living in that recklessness for as much as possible, that's going to be made a little bit harder. What they did to change up the uptime of recklessness was reduce certain talents such as Unbridled Ferocity, which gives Rampage not a 20% chance to grant recklessness, oh no, only a 6% chance, and that is noticeable. Maybe we want to take talent out of this ability and put it somewhere else, like maybe Depths of Insanity, but yeah. Also, another one, Anger Management. Now they change how much rage you need to spend before it reduces the cooldown of Recklessness, but also Bladestorm and Ravager, which kind of sucks for Bladestorm specifically. Now you need to spend 30 rage to reduce the cooldown of those abilities by one second instead of 20. Not the biggest change, but it is noticeable. I am definitely spending a lot less time inside of my Recklessness. And that is a playstyle that a lot of Warriors actually enjoy, just being able to maximize that's part of the fun, part of that skill expression. And with that, I kind of move on to some of the hero specs and talk about some of the changes they've done with them recently. Protection Warrior didn't get too many changes, but we did see some adjustments to some of the core hero specs. Starting off with the Colossus, we have a couple of adjustments such as, and this is going to be kind of weird and really difficult to show, but if I'm careful here, you should be able to see something. So the main ability of Demolish was, has been definitely a bit of a point of contention for a lot of Warriors because it essentially is an ability that locks you in place doesn't really let you move anywhere and you kind of have to stand still and execute the entire rotation or to get the most amount of damage out of demolish being kind of like a high risk because you're stuck in place for a moment but high reward if you're able to get the entire combo going well apparently as of either this build or the one before it you can now technically move with demolish if you are looking at the character you can actually see me kind of turning and if you go for any kind of speed type of talents you can actually somewhat sort of slowly start to move you're not going to be making a lot of headway but the ability technically no longer roots you so let's say if you were demolishing and then you move while you were channeling it that would technically break the ability but let's say if you are now moving mid you can now kind of keep moving in the same direction with demolish and still execute the entire ability Essentially, the ability had to have you plant in order to channel it, and if you moved, you broke the channel, but now you can kind of move 
while still channeling it. So I guess it's kind of a good change. I really do think they need to go back to demolish and at least give you like very, very, very slow movement speed, right? Like maybe 50% speed reduction. So at least you can move or make micro adjustments or maybe like dodge out of a fire or slightly out of an ability while still being able to reach the enemy with your demolish ability. Just something little so you can at least kind of get around the enemy and can maybe even reposition a little bit. Another change is Colossus can now proc Colossus Might, the ability right here. Colossus Might is some Colossus Might is a buff that increases the damage of your next demolish by 10% as you Mortal Strike and use other abilities. Mortal Strike and Execute grants you now a stack of Colossus Might and Cleave once it hits multiple targets, also grants Colossus Might. But the change here is Execute now can proc it, not just Mortal Strike, which is massive. This changes the rotation a little bit where once an enemy is super super low as a warrior yeah you can play a play style where you're playing around executions precision where you will execute a few times and then you'll send a mortal strike because now it's buffed by those execute procs but if you end up playing a build that doesn't play into executions precision and if you are playing an aoe heavy build this is kind of what it looks like right now as a colossus then you just kind of want to spam executes and that's perfectly fine and that actually feels really really good because you just change your rotation into those big executes it stacks up the ability especially if you get a bunch of haste as as well maybe in a full raiding build if you're able to just spam a bunch of executes this gives the ability to have a lot of cooldown reduction for demolish thanks to the dominance of the colossus effect once you reach 10 stacks every other time you would to reach a stack it instead of reduces the cooldown of the ability so then you can kind of demolish over and over and over which is a fun rampy type of playstyle that i like about the colossus then we have a couple updates for the slayer and as much as i want to play around with slayer and show you guys what the slayer is like it currently doesn't work technically on paper this is apparently one of the best <laughs> hero talents available and it just might be perfect but it just doesn't fully work so one of the main mechanics of slayer is your attacks have a high chance to aura on the target defenses do using a free strike called slayer strike which deals additional damage marking the enemy for execution this play style functions really really well with execute type of abilities as when you execute the target that is marked for execution you get to reduce the cooldown of blade storm by five seconds which you get to use pretty regularly you also get to apply these stacks called overwhelm which can be built by blade storming or by hitting an enemy marked with execution or by executing an enemy that is marked so enemies basically take up to 10% additional damage almost constantly and this talent heavily plays around the ability of sudden death sudden death is a mechanic that we talked about earlier that now gets two charges and initially slayer gave you more chances to gain sudden death so you can execute more consistently even outside of those execute windows so basically we're executing at all times not just when the enemy is at low health and it was kind of fun just to incorporate the ability more regularly but they've adjusted the way that the slayer's dominance works where those slayer strikes the free procs that you get from slayer's dominance used to give you a chance to proc more sudden deaths but now it's actually no longer rng every three slayer strikes you gain sudden death and slayer strikes proc fairly regularly just about every one of your abilities can put up a buff of mark for execution if i can get a third one right here in just a moment yep and now you have a sudden death now you have a sudden death you don't even need to be talented into sudden death either you could just now proc this pretty consistently as a fury warrior in particular especially with a very high haze build you actually can send out so many different abilities back to back at the target and you can see just how often i'm executing them i like this talent a ton it plays really really well i enjoy the play style for it it also can center it as well with blade storm making it a much stronger cooldown which as a fury warrior in particular was super fun to test out during the early days of the alpha but the problem with this one is the play style for this hero spec doesn't really work you see there's this buff right here called imminent demise which buffs your next blaze storm to do additional damage yeah once you have any one of these stacks you can press the ability of blaze storm so on paper this one seems like one of the better hero specs it has interaction it plays off of the talents that are existing it doesn't necessarily adjust your mechanics too much but it lets you utilize the same familiar mechanics in a more aggressive way building and building and building for better damage amplifying abilities such as blaze storm and for fury as well as arms both have unhinged so now you can send mortal strikes and bloodthirst into your target while you're playing as the slayer and all of your base abilities also do additional damage and it just fits really well it's just not functional but slayer is now looking even better than ever before so if you're looking at warrior looking at playing fury looking at playing with blade storm and finally make it a function slayer might just be the perfect spec to make that dream real going forward Either way, I've been enjoying Fury and Arms and checking out all the different hero specs and I cannot wait to actually be able to properly play Slayer without any kind of janky deleting certain buffs in order to activate Bladestorm. 
hopefully in the next week's build. But at the end of the day, who cares what I think about Warrior? I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. What are your thoughts about Fury Arms, as well as the three hero specs, the Colossus, the Slayer, and the Mountain Thane for the Warrior? And which of these specs, as well as hero specs, excites you the most? Right, like, are you looking to pair Arms Warrior together with the Colossus and try to see if you can just unleash the most amount of damage all at once? Also, what are your thoughts about all of the changes, buffs and nerfs, the change to cleave, replacing whirlwind, as well as some of the adjustments to give fewer wares a little bit less up time on recklessness? Do you think it's a good change? Do you think it's a bad change? Or what would you do differently going forward? Let me know all the thoughts in the comments down below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.